friendship. And sometimes uh, I try to say no. But when you love somebody, well, it's hard to say no. My brother is sick. I know him. If he could get off, get him out of bed in the worst condition he ever was, I know how he feels about preaching. Amen. Yep. So I know that he, if he could have been here, he would have. Yes. I called early this morning. He said, brother, I need you. I said, well, brother, I got, I got stuff. I got stuff to do. And he said, I know, but I need you. And when somebody puts it like that, it makes it harder to say no. Yeah. Amen. But I give God all the glory, honor, and the praise. Amen. I honor my brother. I honor his beautiful wife. Amen. 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 I, I honor Mount Zor. Amen. Amen. You, are all, you are all a family, and I, I just thank God for you all being here tonight. Um, Pastor Aaron, thank you. Pastor Johnson. Pastor Liz, thank you. Um, we have so much love for you because we've been here before, like you said. Every time we come, something transpires in this place. <laughs> so we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. Amen, amen. I want to take a moment uh, to honor my friend, the brother Kerry Johnson. Amen. 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 And, uh, we kind of had breakfast and lunch today together, but... <laughs> But uh, I want you to know, brother, I love you as well, and praise God for you. You've always been a friend and somebody I can talk to and, and bear my burdens with. So I thank God for you. Amen. 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 I, I want to thank God for all the deacons and deaconesses and pastors. And my homeboy, Joe. Talk to my boy. Amen, amen. Joe used to pray for us and come to the house and bring his son, little Joel, and me and little Joe be up there tearing up some snacks right now. Man. <laughs> I, bet, I bet Joe about this high now, man. Amen. 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 I, I just thank God for being here, and I thank God for all of you. Uh, we now direct our attention to the Lord and his awesome word. Yes. I want to ask them to pray with me. Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. God, we thank you for this opportunity once again to stand and preach your word. Well, God, I thank you because there have been times when I couldn't stay. And I remember praying and said, Lord, if you could just allow me to stand flat-footed and preach your word. So I'm thankful to you, God. I don't take it for granted. I ask now, God, that you give me a fresh infilling of the Spirit, God. Move in me, through me, God. I surrender all that I am, all that I have, so that you may speak to your people in this place, on this night, in any way you want to do. I surrender, God. I'm your servant, God. There's anything in me that will prevent your word from coming forth. God, take it out right now. Anything wrong in me, take it out. Take it out. We need the word of God. We need the rain of God. Glory. 
glorious name that I say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you. Come Holy Spirit. In the epistle of Peter, the first epistle of Peter, chapter 5. Where God says this. Be alert and of sober mind. I'm going to wait until y'all get there. First Peter. First Peter chapter 5. This is a word. This is a word. This is a word. First Peter chapter 5. Verses 8 and 9. Well. Everybody there? Amen. Word of God says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. All right. I want to use as a subject this evening, standing firm mm. in the faith. Yes. yes. Standing firm yes. in the faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Come on. Come on. Yes. Thank you. The spiritual reality for believers is that we experience the blessings and favor of God who cares for us and promises us in his word an abundant life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but God is good. I know, I know it for myself. However, the reality for those who are spiritually lost is that they must adjust to a world that is constantly changing and is filled with contradictions and confusion and sin and depravity and hate and division and all of these things that will separate not only the world but the people of God. Yes. I want y'all to know the church is divided today, y'all. Yes, yes. Some people are worshiping a man who is the devil. Some people were worshiping a man yeah. who cares for nobody but himself. Yeah. And if you ever was to read Proverbs chapter 6, which tells us about the profile of an evil man, you won't even have to call a name. <laughs> but, 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 but you see that the problem is, is there are people who, who, who say that they love God and trust God and believe God that are propping this man up who is a defiler and a liar and a divider and saying that he's special in the sight of God. Mm. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand, there's so many people that are buying into this mess mm -hmm. because the man had a TV show. Help us today. Yes, yes. And they figure, you got a TV show, you must be all right. <laughs> I want you to know that the devil is a liar. Yes, yes. The devil is a liar. Yes, but, but, but hear this. The concept of abundance is relative when we consider variations in wealth and assets and the fact that some people are content to have very few possessions and few resources. I knew a lady at my, my, my church in Baltimore, we called her mama years ago. She would get up every Sunday and run around the church. She's about 80 years old. Every Sunday she would get up and run around the church, hollering and crying, giving God the glory. All right. And one day my, my sisters gave her a ride home uh -huh. and went up the steps to her apartment. And she had very little in her apartment. And my sister came home and she said, I wonder how is it that somebody who had, who's living with next to nothing can 
come to church every day at 80 years old and run and give God the glory. Uh, something wrong with us, y'all. When we live in the abundant life, God gives us all these houses and cars and all this stuff. And some people don't even want to get up and walk around here. Something, something wrong. Something wrong. Say a word. Say something. But but you see how people came from very little. They came from the south and used to pick cotton and tobacco and all this stuff. So when they get up here and they got a place of their own, I don't care whether it's just a small apartment on the second floor with a kitchen and a bathroom and a, and a living room, but they're going to give God the praise because they don't have to go through that mess anymore. Here is a woman, obviously, who was standing on the faith of God all her life. And if we can't understand how to praise God with all the stuff we got. Yeah. Come on, Come on. Yeah. 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 Well. Say so. All the stuff. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, I see people turning away from the church all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Young people are turning away because they can't figure out what we're doing in the church. Yeah. Why y'all got so much mess going on? Why y'all talking yeah. about each other on the phone yeah. like this? Yeah. Why, why, why is it that, that y'all talk about love but I ain't seeing no love in the church? Yeah. 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 The Bible tells us to stand firm on the faith. Yeah. Even as we acknowledge God's goodness, we must be careful about how we conduct ourselves and how we idolize people and material things. Yes. 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 They will mess your mind up. Yes, sir. Oh, you, I see people all these dressed people now, they're going to jail. They, they, they're going to jail. <laughs> They go to jail. Yeah. They got a lot of stuff, but they go to jail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all of these. Yes. And when you put money above people, yes, and when you treat people like dirt, and when you abuse people and set them up as prostitutes and all this other mess, there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a penalty to pay. Yes. Because you neglected the responsibility of taking care of people yes. for your own dirty mind and your own yes. dirty mess. Yes. Something is wrong. Yes. Something is wrong. But my brothers and sisters, I'm, I, I'm, I'm confused because we have so many people, our people, who can't see. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they can't see because they don't know the word. Yeah. I'm gonna say something now, but not gonna just gonna mess you up. Come on. It's a whole bunch of people in the church that don't know the word. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, say it. It's a whole bunch of people ain't come to Bible study. Well, a whole bunch of people ain't come to Sunday school, but they they want to come and listen to the praise. They can get off on the praise. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when the preacher get up, you see the old head nod. Yeah. <laughs> We see it. We see it. But what I'm trying to tell you is we need to uh, we need to develop a love for God's word. I'm telling you, there's nothing to me like being able to preach the word of God because there's something great. There's something awesome. There's something transformational in it. So when I have the opportunity to preach God's word, it does something to me. It reminds me that I'm, I, I'm not what I used to be, but I still need to be that. The more I learn, the more I need to know because I'm learning that, that the more I know, the more spirit I get and the more spirit I get, the more convicted I get and the more convicted I get, the more, the, the more praise I get. I want yeah. you to understand that when the Lord continues to use me in his word and teaches me his word, yeah. Yeah. there's something glorious that goes on inside of me. Yeah. I love the word of God. I, I can't tell you how much I love it because I can't tell you what it is for me to sit down and write a sermon. My, 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 my family says, why, why, why are you doing this? I used to, when, when the pandemic was going on, I started doing videos on Saturdays and preaching the same thing on Sundays. And my, my brother had to tell me, brother, why are you doing this? My family had to tell me, why are you doing this? But there was something yeah. about being in the Word of God yeah. 
there was something moving that I just can't explain. That, that when I, I read the word and study the word and begin to write what the Lord has deposited in me, something happens to me. First yes. 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 Peter 5, 6, and 7 says this. Listen. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Who, may, who, who, who he may exalt you in due time, yeah. casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Yeah. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when I when I when I when I eat when I feed on that word, I realize more and more how much God loves me. I realize what he's trying to tell me. I realize the same thing he tried to tell Cain uh, when, when he, after he killed his brothers, the same thing he told me when I was, was, when I was down there in the gutter. He said, you need to change or else your sin is going to overtake you. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We need to realize that our church needs to start from the beginning. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you a nugget. So many people in the church Want to know what their gift is. Uh -huh. But, but we're, we're, we're missing something. We're missing something. Ephesians chapter 5. Tells us about the fruit. Of the spirit. Yes. The fruit means that, that, that this is. This, that, that it's evident. That it's exhibited. That, that it's, it's expressed. When we get to the place. Where we still got honoring people in the church. Running around mad at each other, mad because you sit in my seat. Uh, my sister told me she she big church in Baltimore. She said she said one Sunday somebody told her about new psalmist, and she looked over and and, and and two women were fighting because somebody took somebody's seat. We 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 need to understand that we can't be effective purveyors of the gifts of God unless we have. The fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, yeah. kindness. We need to have all of these things. The Bible tells us we can't do nothing without love. You can call yourself a minister all you want, but when you, if you don't love nobody, right. you ain't said nothing. Right. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you, that he may exalt you, that he may give you something to do, that he may give you a ministry, that he may give you a gift, that he may give you something worthwhile to do on this earth, but you need to be able to experience the fruit of the Spirit of God that is now living inside of you. If you ain't got it, you ain't no earthly good. Come on, Pastor, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you, my brother and sister, we, we're, we're teaching these people wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't get to the gifts unless you have the fruit. All right, then. Come on. Here. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. I don't care how bad a preacher you are. I, I understand these things because, see, I've seen some, some preachers that get up, jump, holler, and run through the pulpit. But when they get out on the street, it's something different. Mm -hmm. We must learn that it is the Spirit of God yes. living in us, yeah. alive in us, teaching yeah. us, molding us, transforming us. If we ain't got that, we ain't got what the Lord is saying in His Word. Yeah. Paul didn't put that. Paul didn't put that in his book for nothing. That we could just overlook it and, and skip the process and go right right to the power. But we need to have the fruit first. Yeah. Uh, ah, come on, Pastor. Believers gratefully affirm that we are living in the blessings and favor of the Lord. This, this does not mean, however, that we are not challenged by the constant enticement of a corrupt world, the deceitful law of evil and temptation, and the self-destructive tendencies that come upon us when we fall away from God. Taking authority in the name of Jesus over the powers of wickedness requires commitment to remain sober and alert and to stand firm in faith. Otherwise, we become lost in the world like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And when we're lost, we're vulnerable. Yes. 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 First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober yes, and alert. Yes, Your enemy, mm -hmm. the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion yes. looking for someone to devour, resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers 
uh, 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 in this world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's hard to have faith sometimes. Yeah. It's hard to stand on faith. When your mama died, when your children died, when your husband died, when your wife died. I know it's hard. But here is the thing. God always sends us something good. He allows us to understand that, that when we trust in him, he would allow us to get through that self-pity and, 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 and still be, be, be vessels of the most high God. Yes, yes. It is important to stand firm in, in our faith when we face inevitable storms and hardships and broken hearts and bereavement and fear and doubt. My wife told you a story earlier about my first wife passing. I remember when that happened. I don't want to switch that on my worst enemy. Anybody dying that I love is hard. But, but this is the thing. I found myself feeling sorry for myself, feeling that void. I needed love. I needed the love that was there. It isn't anymore. But, 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 but the Lord showed me something. Mm -hmm. He kept having people because they knew I was in the ministry. I was working at a law firm at the time. People would come into my office and say, Oliver, I know you're going through but I got this problem. And I would start ministering to them. Well, well, well. And, and, and all of a sudden stuff was coming out of me that wasn't me. And I began to wake up every morning and say, Lord, give me somebody to minister today. Because I don't want to be feeling sorry for myself today. But what I realized is when I allow God to use me in the midst of my storm, in the midst of my bereavement, in the midst of my, 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 my downtime, he will bless me. And when the spirit begins to flow through you and you say words that you know is not yours, you say, thank you, Father, for lifting me up. That, that we are we, we, we are not here by chance. We're not in church by chance. We are seen by the blood of Jesus. And that makes us doers of the word. Yeah. Doers of the word. Doers. The phrase stand firm is mentioned many times in the Bible because most assuredly we all we all will be tested. Yeah. But we must be steadfast in our knowledge of and trust in the Lord. Yeah. It means we are committed and holding fast to the promises precepts and commands in God's word. Yes, sir. This is not always easy uh -huh. depending on how badly we are wounded. Uh -huh. How severe the circumstances. Yeah. And if we have no one to come to us and, and walk beside us and bear our burden. Yes. We need that. That's who we are as people of God. We minister to one another. Mm -hmm. And when we are doing that in the church when it's all about all this ancillary stuff, mm. we're missing the point. Yeah. The point of fellowship is that we uplift each other. Yeah. We minister to one another. We sing to one another. Yeah. We can do all we can to yeah. bring people who are out, and out, you know, going through something to let them know it's going to be all right in the Lord. Amen. Huh. This means trusting in God's promises, uh, plans and promises, even uh, uh, when, when it may be difficult or unclear. Uh, listen, listen to me. Sometimes we don't always get the word. Well, uh, well. Come on now. Sometimes it's yeah. hard. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you know, they should tell me, uh, uh, when somebody hits you, turn the other cheek. <laughs> that ain't what I grew up with. <laughs> My folk told me somebody hit you, you hit them back hard. <laughs> but I've learned, I've learned that it, that can be figurative too. Yes, it's not just a blow, but it's a word. Yes, sir. I can come back with another word, with another curse word if they curse me out. Yeah. Or I can do what God told me to do, to turn yeah. the other cheek yeah. and yeah. be kind. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. kind to someone who's been nasty to you. Yeah. Yeah. They look at you like you crazy. Yeah. I just cussed this woman out and she's nice to me. Yeah. But it does something. Yes, sir. When we employ what God is telling us to use, yeah. you stop the nonsense. Yeah. And maybe, just maybe, you show that person what it is to be saved by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. 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 Usually in our struggle, we, we run from the word of God. Mm -hmm. I see many times when people are going through something, they don't come to church. Come on, man. Yes, sir. You better. Come on, man. They, 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 go, they go in the room and lock the door and curl up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
you know, I, I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. I got stuff. Yeah. But but what I'm trying to tell you is that is that when you are going through, that's the time when you learn to come to the church yeah. and praise your way out of whatever you're going through. Yeah. When the Lord showed me that, when the Lord showed me that, that all I need is go to church and just let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to church and have a good cry. Yeah. What one of them nasty, snotty cries? You know what I mean? You just, just, just let it go. People be looking at me. Man. But listen, what I'm trying to tell you is, when you come to church, you want to get all that stuff off of you. Yes. Yes. You want to get it off. You want to shout or run. Yeah. Just like Mama I used to run. She was getting all the stuff off of her. Yeah. 80 years old, running around the church. We didn't know what was going on. Yeah. But we go to church so we can get rid of our stuff. Yeah. And we sing praises because the Bible tells us what? When we praise God, He does what? Inhabits the praises of His people. What happens when God inhabits the praises of the people? I'm going to give you another nugget today. When you learn how to praise God, yeah. it changes your mind. Yeah. Yes. Listen, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. When you learn how to have faith, yes. it changes yes. your mind. Yes. I remember somebody told me once when I was when I was uh, struggling as a young young preacher, and, and I went to this pastor and talked to him. I said, Pastor, I've been struggling. I did everything I need to do. I went and got my master's degree. I, I, I went through a catechism. I've done everything I need to do, but I can't, I can't get ordained. But I know I'm called to be a pastor. Mm. And he said something to me that blew my mind. He said, if you know that you are called to be a pastor, start walking in it right now. Mm. Mm. And when you learn that faith in God changes your mind. Yes. It'll make you stop looking like you're pitiful. You know when you're pitiful, everybody can see it. Yes. <laughs> and when you bless, everybody can see that too. Yes. So we need to learn that even though we're going through something, it's to learn to walk around with our blessed face on yes. because we know that by and by the Lord is going to deliver me out of my son. It changes the energy. Change it. People will come to you that didn't come to you before yes, because they ain't got time for pitiful people. Well. Yeah. But if you look like you about something, if you look like you blessed, it's just something about you. Yeah. You ever have people walk up to you and say, something about you? Yeah. I don't know what it is, yeah. but something about you. Yeah. But it is being blessed yes. Yes. where God will allow the energy of the universe and the world and in people to start flowing to you. Yes. I told the same thing to somebody in my church. He just got his doctorate. He said, Pastor, I can't get a job. I said, Brother, I'm going to tell you what this pastor told me. I said, well, if you believe that you need a job in, 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 in a college, start walking in now. The next week he told us, I got a job. And every time we talk, every time he teaches Bible study, we talk about it. Because his mind changed. Instead of sitting around feeling sorry for himself, he was hopeful. And he began to look at what God had in store for him. And he realized that God didn't have him go, go through that crucible of getting his doctorate for nothing. Yeah. Right. You're helping me. You're helping yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Start walking in it now. Start walking in it now. Start walking in it now. Yeah. Walk in your faith right now. Yeah. Walk in your blessings. Walk in your deliverance right now. Oh, come on now. I got to get going. <laughs> the promises of God belong to believers. And every day we are enabled uh, to believe and expect and wait on the manifestation yes, of sir. God's blessings. There are three things we can do to stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith by praising God. Yes, Number one, we praise God in advance because we place our focus uh, and, and our hearts on God. Yes, and not on our circumstances. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when we do that, we realize that we serve an all-powerful God that can do anything. Yes, sir. We praise him for, for, for our salvation and our deliverance and our healing. And the fact that he strengthens and restores us mm. more often than not. Mm. 
And so we need to understand how to walk in God's goodness. The next thing we need to do to stand firm is by praying for others. Yeah. You remember I told you that story about me being pitiful and, 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 and ministering to somebody? I've learned that when I stop focusing on my problems yeah, and do what God told me to do, God begins to move in miraculous ways. Yeah. 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 We got to learn to pray for other people, understanding yeah. that that's, that's our job. Yeah. 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 The next thing we do, oh, uh, let me see here. We praise God uh, in advance. Uh, pray for others. It's easy to focus on others. Uh, to the, in our problems, but, but God's word requires us to pray for others yeah. who need help and deliverance and encouragement so that everyone can experience God's healing. Yes. 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 James 5, 16 says, this, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. Some translations say that the prayer of uh, 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 but a righteous person uh, is effectual. That means that it works. Prayer works. Y'all hear me? Prayer works. Effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. Final thing stand firm in faith by being patient. Faith and patience are often uh, mentioned together or in proximity to one another. Yes, sir. You ever find God, uh, sir, anything talking about faith is going to also take your weight on God. Yes, sir. To have to be patient, to trust in God. Yes, sir. Why, why is that? I'm going to tell you in a minute. But, but the problem is, is that we want stuff right now. Yes, sir. Come on now, Pastor. Come on. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to tell you something. Uh, we, we, we need to understand that there is a process yes, to sir. being blessed. Yes, yes, sir. Come, on, come on, come on. We need now. to understand that, we, that, that, that patience has its perfect work. When we learn how to be patient, there is perfection yes, in, in, in God. James says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, yes, knowing that the testing of your faith We're produces patience. Yes, but that patience, listen to this, have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Let patience have its perfect work. You got to learn to wait on God. Psalm 27 says you got to wait on God. By perfecting, by practicing the, 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 the spiritual principles of praise and prayer yes, and patience, you stand firm in faith and put yourself in a position to be victorious yes, to, and to overcome the world. Yeah. When we let patience have its perfect work, we face problems with a sense of confidence yeah. that God and his divine truth is always accessible, active, and helping us to, uh, gain a higher spiritual understanding yes, of life. Yes, what are you telling me, Pastor? Yes, when we learn how to have faith and have patience, God takes us higher in, 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 in our spiritual fortitude. Yes, sir. You, you, see, you see, people say, well, how do you have more faith? How do you get more faith? Mm -hmm. Number one, you get more faith by being obedient Come on. to God's word. Yes. Yes. When we are obedient to God's word, when we trust in the Lord, when we wait on God, like his word says, yes. God will increase our faith. Yes, sir. Yes. And when your faith increases, Ain't much that can come against you, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Because you belong to God now. Yes, sir. And he will deliver you. He will. Come on now. He will deliver you. When we let patience have his perfect work, we face problems with a sense of confidence that God in his divine truth uh -huh. is always successful yes, sir. and active and helping us. We are giving experiential knowledge of God's faithfulness, and, and it takes away our fear and our doubt. Yes, the experiential knowledge of God mm -hmm. is when God does something for you in your life and you never forget it. Yes, sir. You I never got forget it. Uh -huh. You never forget it. Yes. And this is the thing I've learned in more ways than one. I've seen miracles in my life. Yes, when the doctors gave up on people, I've seen, I've seen the Lord step in and have somebody live for 20, 30 years. My sister did. I understand that when I see somebody in the hospital I say, well, doctors, they don't know what else we can do. I said, well, that's it for you, brother. You ain't, you ain't got nothing else. 
But I know a dog that is able. I know a dog that has that that brought people back from the dead. I know a dog that is able to pick you out of your deathbed and bring you back to life. God is able. God is able. Yes, sir. Hebrews 11 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For, for he who comes to God must believe, must believe, must believe, must believe, must believe everybody that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, diligently, I want you to remember, I'm telling, I'm emphasizing these words, I want them to stick. The diligently see whether you, you, you've experienced the loss of loved ones, health issues, disappointments, both big and small, it can be difficult to, to persist in faith. It's hard sometimes. Yes. But instead of caving under the weight, uh, we must stand strong. Praise the Lord for his goodness. Praise, uh, praise, uh, praise him uh, for those who suffer. Wait on God. Yes, and, and, and you will come out stronger and better. Yes. Yes. One of God's most significant, timeless, and uplifting promises in the Bible is found in Jeremiah 29. Uh -huh. After 70 years of Babylonian captivity, God promised that he would return his people to the promised land and restore their prosperity. Uh -huh. As God speaks through uh, Jeremiah, he reminds his chosen people, his believers, that no matter how bad things are, no matter how long you've been suffering, or how, how bad they can get, he will never Leave you. Yes, sir. He will never leave you. Never leave you. Nor forsake you. Yes, He's always there. Always. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the thoughts that, that, that I think the words and the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And you will call upon me and, and, and go and pray, for, pray to me, and I will listen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. No matter how bad it is. No matter how bad it is. Prayer changes. Yes, sir. Prayer yes, changes. Yes, sir. Uh, in Jesus Christ, listen to this. I see the secret of the mystery that continues to unfold in my life. Because I discovered that the mystery is Jesus. Amen. And he was ordained to come to this earth and get up on the cross and die before God created anything. Yes. Because his redemption plan has been ordained before God created anything. Yes. He knew what he was doing when he created us. Yes. He knows that we're like sheep and we can get lost and we can be deceived. That's why he tells us over and over in the Bible, do not be deceived. Yeah. I'm telling you, he understands what he made us to be a new that Jesus would need to come and deliver us from the sin that was wrought by Adam and Eve. Yes. Salvation and redemption, and redemption in him and the plan for my life was divinely conceived in glory before I was in my mother's womb. Yes. Because God is infinite and not bound by time, yes, space, energy, or dimension, or, 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 or matter, but because they are all his creation. His divine movements toward me transcend multiple dimensions so that his love and glory are revealed so that I may know him and understand the timeliness of his blessings and favor in my life. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by, that's my testimony there, y'all. That's why I mean sound funny. Right. But I, what I'm trying to tell you is I believe in multiple dimensionalism. Mm -hmm. you, you, ever, you ever hear about black holes and, and light years yes. and all this stuff with time really stand still or moves faster. And I want you to understand this. Time means nothing to God. That's right. But, 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 but see, when you learn that, 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 that God will start your blessing two weeks before he gives it to you, then you understand that, that God is in motion uh, even while you're asking. Yes, God! So I learned that, that, that when I go down and see that there's money in the bank, and I go down the next day and my bank account is full, I realized that God had done something two weeks ago. Somebody signed the check. Somebody put it in the mail. Somebody received it in the bank. And the money is dead. What I'm trying to tell you is time means nothing to God. 
but but when we when we understand, we need to wait on God because God is doing something out here so that we can receive our blessing over here. That's why we're waiting on God. That's why we're trusting in God, not giving up on Him because we understand that when we wait on God, He will bless us beyond measure. He will pour out blessings from heaven that like we've never seen before. So if we wait on God and trust in Him and stand firm in the Word. My relationship with God allowed me to stand strong in the faith because I trust Him. Trust Him. First Peter six and seven says, "Therefore, humble yourselves yes. under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due season, casting your care upon Him, for He cares for you." I want you to know that that if you don't know, God is calling His children, His believers, to come on home. God is calling them to a revival, Pastor, because we need it. God is saying that we need to trust in him right now in this crazy, evil world where, where evil men are trying to rule all over the world. Yes. We need to trust in a God who is able to deliver us from the power of sin and the devil. But we understand that all this is by design because we understand that evil has been in the world from the beginning. Yes. Yes, sir. And if we don't know how to handle it, we need to call on an awesome and almighty God. Yes. And most of all, we need to stand firm in the word of God, trust in the Lord, learn to love his word, go to Bible study and read, uh, meditate on the word of God, and allow that yes. word to sink into your heart and allow you to grow. That's what God requires of us. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. And because we're not doing it, uh-huh. Because people are not learning and studying the word. Because the Bible tells us to study to do what? Show thyself a proof. Yes, ma'am and yes, sir. <laughs> study the word of God. We need it. We need it. We need to know what it says. Yes, Old sir. and New Testament. We need to know that the redemption is in both the Old and the New Testament. Yes, we need to understand that Jesus came at the right time so yes, that we can be delivered from all this mess in us. Yes, sir. I want you to know that I stand Sing. in all the Lord. I worship him with all of my heart, Sing. soul, mind, and yes, strength. Sir. Because I know him for myself. Yes, sir. I want you to know that I serve an awesome God. Yes. I don't put my trust in man. Yes, sir. I love you, my brothers and sisters. But I put my trust in God. Yes. Because I know he will never let me down. Yes, sir. I stand firm, stand firm on the word of God. Yes, sir. Because that's what's required. That's what's required. Hold on to God. Hold on. Hold on. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you afresh daily. Daily. Ask him to give you a work so that you can be blessed in the work that you do. Yes, sir. Go out and minister to the world. Yes, sir. The Bible says as you are going. As you go. Tell the world, tell the world that Jesus died for them, yes, sir, just as well as He died for me. I will live my life for my God and my Savior. I will stand on the Word because I believe. Amen. I believe. Amen. Amen. Pray with me, please. I gotta pray. Come on, y'all. Pray. Y'all can sit down for me. Just pray with me, please. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you for this opportunity. I pray, God, that your word hit the hit the mark. I pray, God, that somebody heard. I pray, God, that, that, that I was able to be your right instrument, God. I pray, Father, that we understand that we need revival, yes. that we need your word. We need to love each other. We need to understand the power of love, Father. We need to understand that our churches need to be sanctuaries of love. We need to change what we're doing. We need to be able to tell people about the goodness of the Lord and what that means to us because we, we, we our testimony is our strength. Teach us, Lord, Teach us. how to use our testimony to draw people to you. I was there you were one time, but God has brought me out. And I'm never going back. I'm standing. Believing in the word. It is my lifeblood. And I will never turn my back on God. God, I give you all the praise, the glory, and honor. Give you all the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We give God praise for the word. Amen. Yeah. 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 This is a revival that the Lord has put in my spirit. This is the first of uh, you heard in our occasions I did uh, when we first started in 2019. I sent out about 25 different letters to the local churches in the area. And uh, they received it, but they, for whatever reason, never made it to any of the revivals. And then I could have gave up, but the Lord kept asking me to continue. So uh, here we are. And uh, 2024. This is the first. And we're going to be setting it aside. I've already told the congregation that this is the first one. We're going to be doing it every year in the fall. Amen. Amen. And we may not be here. We may be hosting another church. But uh, I, I'm about doing the work of the Lord. Amen. 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 You heard the, You heard the call about salvation. Is everybody saved? Amen. But as, as I was hearing the words, stand, standing firm, and, and I understand the work of the Lord, and I know there's many things that I can say, but if you understand who I am, I guess it was because of how I was raised. I want to to I disseminate that all, of, all the time. The congregation knows about that. I, I respect those that that come and my wife knows that I always tries to be where they are when they have functions and they have church services. This is what I would like to do. I, I, I want to respect them. I, I'm asking for Pastor Johnson if he would come, Pastor Green if he would come for with Martin and then I want to close it out with a good friend with a powerful anointing of Bishop Warren. They can come and have order. Just give a few words of encouragement. Amen. 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 Leave it on. Let's welcome. 